I'm not sure in the mentality of the people there is, a, that's why I called, uh, there's a desire for this uh, security, safe, safety, what they have had. Uh, they didn't care that much about the limitations. It was more, much more important for, for the intellectuals and for, I mean, if there would be a way to live without the Russian troops around, but having everybody a job, uh, uh, an existential security, even on a lower level as it used to be, uh, but still too, too pushy, whatever happens, the, the arrival of the roughest, uh, most wild capitalism was really shocking for the people. They, they, they haven't had the, the mentality for it. Uh, the first uh, uh, moment of the shock was where it, it was a happy shock. I mean, we didn't expect uh, to happen what happened. And it came uh, one day from one night to the next morning. And it was, a it was shocking, but it was a happy and uh, full of expectations shock. Now, uh, the the big advantage what we've got it was the freedom whatever it means the the dark side of it was that uh, we have had to realize very soon that uh, you are rather lonely in this freedom i mean uh, if there was any security before it was a false and very limited security but it was a kind of a security which people got to used to for 40 years and suddenly they woke up and that there was Nothing, only what they themselves can do. And the other thing was that, uh, that the orientation became very difficult. Uh, what means what? And what direction we are going? And so on and so on. These countries were dreaming about the Western type national democracies, as there is a French democracy, the Italian democracy, the German democracy. Those, uh, uh, that, those were the examples we tried to get, arrive to somewhere. No, the, for the moment we could arrive there, uh, it was over. There was the EU already. So uh, these countries didn't have the time. Uh, to recreate or reborn their original little national democracies, which used to be before the Second World War, more or less around, at least in Czech, Czech Republic, at least in Hungary. Now, there was a huge urge to join as soon to the EU as it is possible, and without uh, making the base of these democracies, or it, both in social and in economical uh, sense, that makes people uh, a bit depressed, a bit uh, hectic, uh, and uh, this is one <coughs> part of it. The other side of it is still there is a total confusion about the orientation of points. Who, what do we want at all? Which direction we are supposed to go to get better a bit? And it's not easy. Not easy because uh, it was very. I'm sorry. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, because it was very interesting for me last night. I watched this techno documentary, and one of the guys starts that well, the age of the di uh, of the ideologies is over, and that's true, definitely true. Now a country and a region which was pushed under the uh, the this ideology of whatever you call socialism or communism and it was accepted as something we don't like, but we have to live with it. Okay, it has disappeared. Then what? No. I mean, the, the traditional ideologies are not working anymore in the original forms. I have to tell you, this little story, what is told in this film, is not exactly analyzing this. It tells the story of three young, totally dizzy Russian boys who tried to go to the West and they think Budapest, Hungary is already the best if you compare with, with the Soviet Union, which was back then existing yet. And they meet a British and American girl in Budapest and everybody is completely dizzy because that back then, in the uh, turn of the 90, 90, in 1991, 89, Budapest was the crossroads between the East and the West. So everybody was there. Later on, they went further on to Prague, to here and there. 
But back then, Budapest was the place. Con noi questa sera Andrea Trovesi, che è stato così l'ideatore, l'animatore di questa, di questa rassegna Mondo Ex. In questa rassegna cerchiamo, abbiamo cercato, insieme a Bergamo Film Meeting, di dare una visione generale di come è stato raccontato questo periodo chiamato post-socialismo e insieme a questo di come è stato riraccontato, rinarrato il socialismo dopo il socialismo. First I have to tell you that I'm absolutely grateful and happy to be present in this festival because I never expected so many people to be curious to an Eastern European film at 10.30 in the evening. So it's marvelous. Thank you for coming. It's played by it is written script played by mostly by played mostly by actors, but the leading character, the little guy with the guitar, he is himself because I couldn't find such a wonderful actor as he is by himself.